The Justin Robert Young program brought to you as always by everybody who supports us at payjurydaily.com. Hello, YouTube. Hello. How are we doing? Are we doing good? Are we doing Are we doing great? I'd like to think so. Welcome to another edition of Jury Daily. This is a little exclusive content that you guys get. You know, before we start actually recording the podcast. Just us, hanging out. You know, having a good time together. Oh, alright. I think I got some stuff to talk about. We got some good emails. We got the return of high thoughts. What do you say? We go ahead and get started. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Justin Robert Young podcast. My name is Justin Robert Young. Thursday, big day, end of the week for us. Finally, a full week of studio shows again. We got another one of them coming up next week, and then we uh, I'm going to be off. Show won't be, though. We got some uh, some guest hosts coming in the week after next, so very excited about that. I had a lot to do. Planning this, this trip. I'm going out to, I'm going out to Italy, and uh, I, I kind of feel like, uh, I don't know, I want to buy... Um, what do you call I literally was trying to search for it but I didn't know how to search for it in a, in in an in an appropriate term I I feel like I want to wear a a wife beater but they you can't call him a wife beater anymore right like that's inappropriate you can't just say bring you can't go on Amazon and search wife beater right but that's you know, that, I mean, they, uh, is that appropriate? Is it a tank top? <laughs> wow, that was easy. <laughs> I guess, I, 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 for whatever reason, I just want to just kind of be a stereotype in Italy. I just, I kind of want to just be a dude who's wearing like chinos and a tank top undershirt. And I want to pick up smoking unfiltered cigarettes. Maybe I'll drink a lot of coffee. I'll drink red wine at eleven o'clock in the in the morning, and I'll just yell at children playing stickball. I I I feel like this is what I wanted. I want to spend a lot of my time. I'm trying to clear out my schedule where I could just do exactly what I want, and I feel like that's my spirit animal. I just uh uh really my entire life I've lived for the opportunity that I could be the guy who uh, yells. Hey! When uh, a, a baseball comes breaking into my 1920s stoop window, that's kind of what that's kind of what I want to do. I don't know if if that's appropriate there. Like, I, I, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but it's kind of what I want. So I'll go look for tank top undershirts after I'm done with the podcast. Here's something that I did. I went to a bar last night. I heard a story. I thought it was a pretty funny story. So, uh, guy's at a crowded bar, right? And he swears to God that this girl across the bar is making eyes at him. He's like, oh, my God. You know, this is this is happening. Like, she keeps looking at me. like, And she's, like, smiling like she's she she feels like it's like kind of like an energy. It's kind of like 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 a real intense energy. So his friend is like like huh? I don't know really, really you think? It's like yeah no it, like it's happened like upwards of like ten times. So the friend is like well I mean you know buy her a drink isn't that what you do at a bar? Which is like weird. I don't know if I've ever I think. 
I've certainly bought a, a plenty of drinks in my time, but I don't know if I've ever bought like just an unsolicited like, hey, lady, a drink, a drink for the lady. Oh, it's just me, a guy at the end of the bar. Hi, would you would you like a free drink, whether you asked for it or not? Who would say no? <laughs> but anyway, I you know so, so the friend suggests to the guy, hey, buy her a drink, and so he does. Soon as the lady gets the drink, she immediately looks down at her phone. She looks down at her phone, and and and, and she's like now like deliberately trying to not make eye contact. And so he feels kind of confused. He's like, oh, my God, it went from, like, all this eye contact to no eye contact. So he gets up. He's kind of kind of annoyed. He gets up to go to the bathroom. And that's when he sees it. Right behind his head, there's a television showing an important sporting event. <laughs> she literally... Been watching the game, and it looked to him like she was making intense eye contact. (laughs) Oh, that's funny. Here's the news. Oh, that's funny. Here's the news. I wish I had a way to make that, like, pro-Jared thing funny. I just, I don't know how I can make it. I mean, I guess it's somebody else's divorce. That would be a weird, a weird instinct. Oh, that's funny. Here's the news. JC Calhoun writes in our chat, I've never bought a random woman a drink. I have heard women on Twitch talking about when I was I first started going to bars, I would buy my own drink like a sucker, as if it's just normal for women not to pay for drinks. I mean, it is normal for dudes to be thirsty motherfuckers, and, you know, if uh, all, it, all it takes is purchasing a drink to get a lady's attention, I think they're going to do it. They're going to do it all the time, these boys. Oh, these boys. Let's do our news. Denver, Colorado. It's a it's a it's a crazy place and it's only getting crazier. You know, they they really led the way with the legalization of weed. All of a sudden, people were 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 smoking hella weed out there. They were getting they were getting super high and 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 talking to each other and then you're like, "Oh man, I'm from Alabama, man." And, and somebody else is like, yeah, I'm from Massachusetts, man. And now we all talk like this because we're getting high in Denver, man. Who wants to go on a mountain bike ride, man? We're all going to get high and go on mountain bike trips and talk about Carmelo Anthony's rookie year in the NBA, man. That's a That wasn't me doing a... Um, Impression that was actual uh, footage. But, you know, since then, everybody kind of jocked their stees. Denver and, and Colorado in general, because now everybody's legalizing weed. They legalize weed out here in California. They're doing all sorts of crazy stuff, right? Somebody read this today. Uh, apparently out in, in Dallas, these fucking killjoys. They're catching people coming off the plane with CBD oil. That shit's like weed, but it doesn't work. There is no reason to... to, to they, apparently, they popped some grandma with a felony 
drug charts because she brought CBD oil back to Dallas. Fart on that. Anyway, not like Denver. Denver's going the other way. They've uh, now voted to decriminalize magic mushrooms. Magic mushrooms. Like they're going to get high on mushrooms out in in Denver. I don't even know a, a voice, a comical voice that I could put along with that. We read now from the Los Angeles Times, in a last-minute surprise, it appears the city has lived up to its libertarian leanings and passed an ordinance decriminalizing hallucinogenic magic mushrooms, the first measure of its kind in the nation. For much of the last two days, Initiative 301 appeared headed for defeat, but late Wednesday, the city of Denver uh, released what is called the final unofficial results showing the measure passed by the razor-thin margin of 50.56 to 49.44. The results will be certified May 16th. Quote, Kevin Matthews, who heads up the decriminalized Denver organization, the last 24 hours have been a hell of a ride. Most of the votes are in, though there are still some absentee ballots. This is the unofficial, official victory. And he said it sends a clear message to the rest of of the country man leave it to magic mushroom a magic mushroom legalization effort to uh have it think that it's not working only for it to become very very real very fast (laughs) i mean also who's getting popped for magic mushrooms i guess if you're trying to deal them right if you're selling them then it would just be another thing that that you would get you know, uh, arrested for selling, but in general, it doesn't smell. Also, I don't know. I've tried to do mushrooms a couple times in my life, and it never really worked all that well. But then again, like, I don't know. I was in college. Yeah, you know, it's like next thing you know, you're hanging out, and somebody's like, dude, I got mushrooms. And you're like, okay, but you're also drinking and smoking weed, and next thing you know, you... Take the mushrooms and it's like, well, yeah, I'm really high and I'm kind of drunk. So I don't know. I don't know what part of all this the other stuff is. I don't know. Maybe I'll go to Denver. Figure it out. Get on a mountain bike. All right. Let's go ahead and get into your emails. this the other stuff is I don't know maybe I'll go to Denver figure it out get on a mountain bike all right let's go ahead and get into your emails let's go ahead and get into your emails George Orr says, Orlando Weekly just had a story about a great grandmother with arthritis being arrested at Disney World for possessing CBD oil. Shut the front door. Disney World my entire life has been synonymous with drug use. (laughs) When you grow up in Florida, a lot of people like to get high at Disney World. It's just a fun time. Better than doing coke at the Vatican. Well, I don't think anybody wants to do coke at the Vatican. I wanted to smoke crack. Jesus. A great-grandmother with arthritis was arrested at Disney World for carrying CBD oil. Turns out you can't bring CBD oil to Disney World despite it being sold on store shelves across Florida. Hester Jordan Burkhalter, a 69-year-old nice grandmother with arthritis, 
Learned the hard way after she was arrested at the Orlando theme park last month when an off-duty Orange County Sheriff's Office deputy found the cannabis-based product in her purse at a checkpoint. Burke Holter, who lives in North Carolina, was on the trip with her family. She'd been planning the trip for two years. The, er the arrest, however, would land her a felony charge in a 12-hour stay in jail before posting a $2,000 bond, despite the note from her doctor that Burke Halter had in her purse at the time of the arrest. On April 15th, Deputy Vernon LeBron was working as an off-duty capacity at the Magic Kingdom when he was notified by security personnel that somebody may be using illegal narcotics believed to be THC oil. From there, the report states that LeBron tested the glass bottle for THC using a marijuana presumptive test kit, and Burkhalter was arrested. The charges against her were later dropped. Wow. Um... People are going nuts, man. I mean, Jesus, if that lady gets arrested, the fucking the absolute states that I've been in walking through Epcot are, are, are fucking genocide. <laughs> I'm fucking Edie Amin compared to that old lady with a fucking CBD hand cream with a, a fucking peppermint CBD tincture. If that's a felony, uh, I'm fucking Mussolini. I'm I'm Stalin. I rolled into Epcot with fucking like uh, I should probably not be saying this out loud. All right. A lot. A lot. Next time we'll just have to smuggle it in my tummy. Mm. <laughs> All right. Let's get into your emails. Oops. Oops. I fucked up. I fucked up. I fucked it. I fucked it up. I fucked it down. You can go ahead and email us at jurydaily at gmail.com. Again, jurydaily at gmail.com. Ron from Oregon writes, this story is from last fall, but connects well to your story about the Bay Area pothole vigilantes. Love the show, yo. There is a man who filled 600 potholes across Mumbai in three years to deal with the death of his son. This from the Hindustan Times. Dadaro Bilhor soothes uh, uh, the roads surfaces, rests his shovel, and looks at the sky and prays to his son, one of a thousands of Indians killed every year in accidents caused by potholes. Prakash Bilhor, a promising student, was just 16 when he died in July 2015 in Mumbai, India's hectic financial and Bollywood capital with 20 million people. To help deal with the grief, Prakash's devastated father, Dadaro, decided he would do something about Mumbai's roads, which, like most of India, are notoriously shoddy. Using sand and gravel collected from building sites, Bilhor has filled almost 600 potholes across India's financial capital within the last three years. The 48-year-old vegetable vendor does it to pay tribute to his beloved son in the hopes that it will save lives. Quote, Prakash's sudden death left a huge void in our lives. I do this work to remember and honor him. I don't want anyone else to lose a loved one like we have. Hey, big shout out. To that man. Ken writes, I looked at previous Mark Twain Prize winners because I had believed the Mark Twain Prize was more of a social humorist prize in the vein of Mark Twain himself, other than just a general comedian type prize. I figured it was meant to be specifically given to comedians who shine a mirror and poke fun at society. I couldn't think of anyone more fitting of such an award than Chappelle. I actually learn a lot from Chappelle's special, uh, some real-world wisdom type stuff. However, looking at the list, I think it's just comedians. I love Steve Martin, but I don't think his influence on comedy could be over. I don't think his influence on comedy could be overstated. 
I think he was the first superstar comedian, somebody who could fill an arena. But is he a satirist? I've always thought his comedy was more about the courage to do the goofiest shit with unflinching conviction. Anyone else delivering his material would bomb. That said, Cruel Shoes was a funny-ass book, so maybe I need to refine that theory. Anyhow, the prize seems to alternate between a white guy and a woman slash person of color. I figure Seinfeld will get it next time. He ought to turn around and hand it to Larry David, but whatevs. Miles writes, I have loved being interested in what entertainers and specifically comedians think of the outstanding people in their field. One of the things that I've heard comedians speak in amazement about Chappelle is that he will do stand-up comedy busking. No comedy club, no crowd that showed up to see him, just Dave waving people over to a sidewalk and starting his routine. Comedians talk about the ballsiness uh, of this like it's animal control workers talking about the way Steve Ir Irwin handled rattlesnakes, eschewing all the standard protective actions and simply trusting that if he does his job right, he won't get bitten. As someone who's done a couple one-man live shows, what do you think of the idea of performing for a completely unprimed crowd? Uh, I actually think it's, it's, it's a lot like, I mean, busking in general is about keeping people's attention. It forces you to understand that you know, you can't waste people's time. That's, I think, the biggest thing, is that there's no setup and there's no pre-qualified audience, so you are constantly justifying why people aren't walking away. It's high stakes, but I think it... I'd never heard that about Chappelle, but it makes sense. He is a ballsy dude, and now he's really famous, so I feel like if Dave Chappelle just stopped on the sidewalk now and started doing his comedy special, it would be, like, something you'd be very, very happy about. You'd be thrilled about that happening. Okay. Guys, are you ready? Oh, yeah. We didn't do it last week, but this time, it's back. Ladies and gentlemen, I reintroduce you I reintroduce you. Here we go. To a little segment we call If you describe somebody as Latin today, they neither speak the language nor come from Rome. When you are fired, you are disappointed. Why do we call them tentacles if there are eight of them? Mm -hmm. 
what if Game of Thrones is really about who gets indoor plumbing first? God damn it, that was the ending one too. Here we go. Music is just math in drag. Those were high. I can't believe I fucked that up. <laughs> How funny is that? I know, I fucked up yours. It was a good one. It was my ender. That was my that was my big finale. And I fucked it up. Oh well. I guess I'm just a fuck up. About. You'd be thrilled about that happening. Okay. Guys. Are you ready? Oh yeah. We didn't do it last week. But this time. It's back. Ladies and gentlemen, I reintroduce you. I should probably take that down just a bit. Comes in a little hot. I reintroduce you. Didn't do it last week, but this time, it's back. Ladies and gentlemen, I reintroduce you. To a little segment we call... Nailed it. And here we go. And that will wrap us up for today. I want to thank our producers, uh, the Jen, PD Rave, Non-Specific, Rock and Roll, Martian, Joe Acosta, Will, James, the OG, Brito, Will, Chris, Bill, Dustin, Biogal, Robert H., Brian C., M., Trey, the Melodica Man, Adam, Middle Age, Mike, and Harry Lee Smith. Folks, you can go ahead and email me, jurydaily at gmail.com, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, at Justin R. Young. Support this show by going to pay Jury Daily. Dot com join our discord bit.ly slash 
jury discord and uh, a big thank you to the man that brought us our jury story for today the one the only often replicated never duplicated sun bun okay that wraps it up folks until next week this is your old pal justin robert young letting you know to please give a round of applause to mr wacky but until I see you again on Monday, more importantly, please don't die.